I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I don't like to leave any guy behind and we have a bit of leftovers right now in a variety of different colors. Oh, this yellow food coloring has something growing in it. I don't think I'm going to use that one. We will just go wash that out. Okay, so sometimes we leave some dye behind, but in general, I do try to save whatever I have left. So that was a bunch of some food coloring. I have a little bit of some acid dyes, and I've also got uh, some Easter egg dye tablets, but I think I'm gonna save those for our dye pot. Right here I have a warm dye pot with a lot of water. Uh, a lot of water, there's some, a bunch of acid in here already. Uh, there were at least 20 cups of water to start and there's probably at least 10 tablespoons of white vinegar in here, maybe a bit more. Um, right now I have a skein of Knit Picks Swish DK yarn. Um, this yarn is 100% Superwash Merino and I've added it to the pot. It was not pre-soaked, but first we're gonna come in with this leftover color and just slowly add it on and try not to get things tangled, but trying also to, uh, I'm not going for something even necessarily. Um, I just want different parts of the yarn to be able to access this color so um, I know it's going to strike pretty quickly which is why I'm just sort of slowly layering and adding it in um, cool I think the food coloring is probably going a bit faster but I like that orange tinge near the end uh, the color Huh. On camera, it's reading a bit brown, but I can tell you in person, I feel that red in there. And now I've got three, what are probably warm-ish colors of Easter egg dye tablets. And I'm just placing them in, in different spots. Um, we will probably see, I see some bubbles over there from one dissolving. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll see much because now that I think, oh, here we go. Okay, I see some red coming up right here. Um, okay, I think one of them has settled over there. I'm not sure how much color we may or may not see. But I'm kind of curious because since they're at the bottom and this isn't packed tightly, um, there could be some spread. But yeah, anyway, I'm just gonna leave this in here. Uh, and the heat isn't even, maybe I'll turn the heat on. Uh, I'll turn the heat on low. Uh, I'm gonna just leave this in here. Oh, I think I see a little bit of yellow or orange spreading there. Anyway. I'm curious if if I thought that it was more obvious what was going on, if the yarn was still white, then maybe I would time lapse this, but I think that these shifts that I can kind of see feel a little bit subtle, not to mention that there is glare uh, from a light over it. Uh, but yeah, I'll come back in I think 20 minutes. But in the meantime, Wow, those colors really are off, but you can kind of see some of that bubble and glare from some of that red. Uh, I'm seeing some yellow pop up over there, and maybe over here is the pink um, in that other area. It is taking all of my self-control to not like stir things up, but let's see. All right, I see a hint of yellow, a hint of yellow, Okay, almost all the color is in here, so I feel like now I can stir things up. I do see, as I try not to tangle things, I see a hint of some yellow over there. Um, 
This is actually really, really pretty. There's a little bit of sunset on. Again, on camera, it's not looking as red as what I see in person, but uh, I think that this is a fun, somewhat random colorway that really I just threw everything together so we could see what would happen. But I'm now just gonna turn off the heat, leave everything in here to cool completely, so then we can go wash it. This yarn is really interesting with some rust colors, some pinkish reds, and then some more orangey brown in there. Uh, even though it had been a few hours since I dyed this yarn, the dye bath was actually still slightly warm when I removed the yarn. It did cool completely before I started washing it, uh, but I was surprised that the pot was still warm. I am now gonna add just a tiny bit of some clear dish soap and we'll check for bleeding. I'm not expecting any, but I think that this serves as a helpful reminder that you can achieve colors that aren't bright, vibrant, rainbow colors with food coloring. Yeah, we had a tiny amount of some acid dyes thrown in here, but that would be enough for what I would call a whisper. This is predominantly food coloring, which it does bind with the same mechanisms as acid dyes. Uh, so, this is worth keeping in mind. But anyway, I'm going to rinse out the rest of the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry, and we'll come back for some final thoughts. But if there's anything to be learned here, you can create something really, really beautiful if you mix everything together. This isn't quite a brown, but even if it were a brown, browns could still be really, really lovely and really fun to knit with. So don't be afraid of just throwing everything together and seeing what you can create. Our no dye left behind skein is a little messy. It's not tangled, but I just wanna show you what I do to neaten things up. I put my hands through and give it a nice snap, rotate and give it a nice snap. And that makes the whole skein come together and be a little pretty and a little more ordered again. I think now you can finally see how pink and orange this yarn is versus the brown that it really looked like on camera to me earlier. Uh, we mixed a lot of colors together, mostly food coloring, some Easter egg dye tablets, and some acid dyes. And we have this colorway that is variegated. It is a subtle variegated yarn. The differences between that orange and pink aren't extreme, but I think this color will provide a lot of depth and dimension into whatever project you turn this into. I hope this video is a reminder that in addition to you know, throwing things together in one pot, you really can mix different dye types together on one yarn and in one pot. But if you are gonna do it in one pot, you wanna make sure that it is something that can use a complementary technique. <laughs> so for example, food coloring and acid dyes use the same kind of mechanism to bind to a wool yarn. You need acid and you need the dye and heat and you put it all together and you can get beautiful colors. Uh, fiber reactive dyes can be used as acid dyes, so you could also sort of put that into this kind of system as well. But there might be some other kinds of dyes and maybe like some natural dyes or like indigo and things that I can easily think of off the top of my head that might not work as well all thrown together in one pot. But, eh, it's always worth trying. Well, maybe not always, but a lot of things are worth trying. The whole Leave No Die Behind series started for me many, many, many years ago, before even Dye Pot Weekly. Because if I was hand painting yarn and I had leftover dyes that I had mixed, I didn't want to throw them away. Because resources, you know, I didn't want to waste resources when there still seemed to be so much pigment left. So I would save the dye and use it into another project. As I started having access to more bare yarn and fiber, this series just became a fun way to really take what I had left and really die by feel and create unique one-of-a-kind colorways. 
Sometimes I might be able to go and try to replicate one of them closely, but ultimately I don't always know the proportions or the amount of color that I added, and so that one-of-a-kind thing is a lot of fun to play with. Now, I don't want you to feel guilty if you have to leave some dye behind. Sometimes you need to wash things and some dye might not be able to get used up on yarn. Some dye leftovers store better than others. Uh, we saw one of my food coloring leftover mixtures did get some growies in it. So it's important to keep that in mind as you're saving and storing leftover dye if you want to leave none of it behind. But there are fun ways you can use a lot of it up and so that's the goal with sharing these uh, random <laughs> projects with all of you. Please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, give the video a like, and leave a comment below. Engaging with these videos is the best way that you can support the content here on this YouTube channel and my fun and more planned and more random dying experiments. If you would like to support the channel on another level, I do have a Patreon. Uh, there'll be a link in the video description and iCard. Patreon, if you don't know, is a platform that connects uh, fans with the content creators they really enjoy, and it's a way for you to subscribe and support them on a monthly basis and get some cool perks in exchange. Um, again, the link's in the video description, and you can find more details over on the Patreon. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope you enjoyed this video.